Pen show, pen show. Yay! Hi, everybody. It's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I just got back from the St. Louis Pen Show, and I wanted to share with you some of the things that we got while we were there. We only had a little time to attend. I hope that if they come again next year, I can spend at least a whole day there. There was enough to see where if you could really take your time at each table, um, booth, whatever you want to call it, it could be a couple of days event. And so it is scheduled for three days. Um, but we just had a few hours this afternoon, but it was really fun. My resolve to not purchase anything <laughs> did not last but the minute I walked in the door to the um, not auditorium but maybe the, the big room where part of this was held so I was not able to go with a couple friends that we had talked about going together but um, my husband and my youngest son came along so let me show you and by the way it was super inexpensive it was just five dollars to have access to all the vendors there were just um, so many, so many beautiful, amazing pens. You can probably go to the website and just see who some of the vendors were. They gave you this little case tote bag when you went in. And um, so that's kind of cool. It's got the pocket things here on each side. You know, it's just kind of your basic, ooh, that's neat though. Look, it's got uh, things for cards there. Kind of your basic bag that are given out at conventions, but I, I thought it was a nice touch. So, um, $5 admission per person. And you know, that could be for all day or just the few hours that we went. They also offered classes. If you go to the website, you could see what kinds of classes were available. Um, I did not do those, but I could, I mean, I really could see spending a, a day, if not the weekend there, and taking advantage of the classes offered and trying pens, trying inks. There was just so much. Um, I did have to buy this little pin. This is hard to open. Um, let's just uh, try it like that. So it just says St. Louis Pen Show. There's a bird with a fountain pen and ink and jazz. St. Louis Arch, I think, is in the background. I have a collection of these enamel type pins, so I had to get one uh, for the collection. So I think I'll just kind of grab stuff and show you um, as I come across it. So at the check-in or registration, they gave you these blotting, what are they called? Blotting paper things. St. Louis Skyline and pen. We just got a couple. We didn't each take one. Um, and then they had this gateway to fountain pen. So St. Louis is a gateway to the West. So I'm guessing that's why they use that terminology. But I thought that was kind of cool. I don't know that I always use the right terms. So I'm going to review that so I sound a little bit more like I know what I'm talking about. One thing I did pick up for just $2 was this little shark ink pen. You can buy these on various uh, vendor sites, but I got one for my um, one of my granddaughters. So her older brother and sister have a shark fountain pen, and I wanted her to have one too. So pretty good for $2. And it sure beats paying shipping. Then um, towards the end, we visited the table of this vendor, Ryan Krushak Studios. They make, they use the Jovo nibs, um, but they make all these beautiful wooden pen. So like, if you're looking at this, the cap and the barrel are all manufactured by them and they're made in all kinds of wood and they can custom make pens from different woods so you can contact them. Really enjoyed talking to um, the owner's wife for a little while and meeting their daughter. And so that's something my husband and I talked about. Maybe that could be a fun anniversary gift or something down the road or for 
some of our kids that are more collectors and like, um, you know, stuff that's a little bit out of the ordinary or made by hand. I have a son that collects knives. Well, two of them, but one particularly likes handmade knives, so he might like that. And then these are also little blotting papers with the little pen nib paper clip. That was also free at registration. So a friend told me that right inside the door, you could try, well, there was a vendor who was selling, I'm trying to find it here, selling a new paper. So I wanted to share that with you. This is called the Ayush or Ayush paper. It's from India. And this is from Kerno Bookbinding and Leatherwork. As you can read, they're uh, based in California, but they were selling all kinds of neat handmade books and books that were bound using old fashioned book covers. I didn't buy any of those. I felt like I was pretty good on my paper supply, but my friend Debbie told me about this Ayush. And so I was um, eager to, to try their product. And they do, um, you call it binding, they hand bind or seal these using the waxed linen thread. So it's kind of a tannish color. So they make these all, they buy it in bulk and they make their own books. We could maybe do a, another video on just the paper. But um, I did get to sample it while we were there, and I liked it a lot, so I thought I, I would go ahead and buy this um, packet of three. I think it was uh, $19, so I didn't think that was too bad for three of their books. And they had pocket ones, they had all kinds of sizes of the notebooks that you could get, the A5 is on lots of those as well. So then I did this thing, which I told myself I would never do. I don't need any more leather notebook covers. But I picked this up. Now in this lighting, it looks kind of grayed. In the lighting there, it was much more of a green. So they have a machine that does this, but they do it all by hand, if that makes sense. They're not sewing by hand but they are hand working the machine. So it's not like automated. This is just a two um, string thing and just your basic uh, string through the spine. It feels so nice. They also had a bison one that, oh, that felt really good. But um, I really like this. So because they're a home business, I not just because of that, but I, I just feel more inclined sometimes to help or purchase from people who have their own small business. So they were super friendly, very informative. This Ayush is Ayush or Ayush, I can't remember how she said it, but again, India and a paper that's not real commonly known. So they were happy to discover that. They also spoke of one called, I think it was Nina, N-E-E-N-A-H, which is a paper made in Wisconsin. I did not buy any of that. Um, here is their card. If you're interested in going, um, I don't know if they have a website, but they do have this email address. So if you had any questions, but I like this. And what I was gonna say is there's two pieces of leather facing in, because it's a thinner leather. The buffalo, or the bison one that they had was just single because it was more thick. but. I like this and I kind of have come to the realization I don't have to use all my notebooks at the same time. It would be okay to switch them out with seasons or as the mood hits. Um, so there's that and this is a brown elastic if you can't tell. Love that. It's sort of like an olive green if it's not coming through. They gave free pens out. And of course a lot of the vendors had um, their cards, stickers you could pick up for free. Let me see what other stickers. I don't have too many of those. The man, I think his name was Ryan, pretty sure it was Ryan at the pen realm, was able to work on a nib of one of my pens for me. I've talked about this Sailor Nebula before. This is a broad nib, but I just was not happy at all 
with the way it wrote. And I even tried to have um, the people fix it from whom I bought it. And they said they did, but I just wasn't happy and I did not ever pick up the pen because I wasn't liking how it was writing. Let me see if I have something here with a little bit of space in it. Anyway, he worked on this and yeah, that's, that is too full. Maybe I won't do it now, but he worked on the pen and let me try it. And he said, yes, the sailors tend to be a drier nib. Um, I said it felt a little scratchy. Did explain that I was a left-handed writer and he said, you know, that's, that's okay. He worked on it and it felt much better. And his suggestion, um, if this is of help to you, is to use Orochizuku inks. He said they are super good wet inks that work with a variety of pens quite well. So maybe I'll just focus on using my Orochizuku inks and the Kujaku that I have. I think will look good with this and we'll try it again with that ink in it. Um, I think I've tried it before and it was like, eh. But now that he did some tuning to the nib, I'm hoping that um, that will continue to be a good fix. It seemed good at the show, but you know, sometimes you just have to work with things a while. Um, what else I wanted to tell you? Can't remember, but I guess I just wanted to say it was super neat to have the, was it the Nibmeister there? Because um, then you don't have to pay the shipping fee to have a pen worked on and he's right there you could try it out and I kind of did that at the last minute so I stuck this in my little single I have it somewhere here I just took it out of it anyway I have a little homemade pen case I had that in there stuck it in my purse and fortunately I had it with me at the pen show so it was all ready to be used in case there was a dead person there and there was so I was very happy about that. I bought my son, um, Drew. My youngest son likes to draw. He's very much a technical drawer. He um, has unique but very clear writing with his numbers and lettering. So we bought him a Pentel um, lead pencil. And we bought him some leads. We purchased that from St. Louis Art Supply, which is in my at large hometown. We live in St. Charles County, but I grew up in St. Louis County, so I kind of claim it as my my hometown. Um, so another thing before I get to the main thing. We came across um, a table where they were selling these vintage Warren penny pens. So back in 1890s, you could buy these fountain pen type things for a penny. They had ink there where you could test them. Um, and my son and I, the artsy one drew, we really enjoyed these. So it's just like a dip pen, but I guess they found these in a building. I haven't read all the inform information, but the people that were talking to me said they bought this old historic building in Indiana and found all these pens there. It's just like a dip pen, Manchester, Indiana. Looks like they gave me a little bit of selection on sizes. Um, I didn't really need these, of course. I mean, who needs any of this? But I wasn't thinking of purchasing from them. But I really had a nice time talking to them. And then I got to thinking, well, I think that uh, Drew would have fun with this. He, again, is the art person. I thought this might be a fun giveaway at some point to offer one of these. Um, and just the fact that it's like a vintage item was really cool. So they have falcon pens, bank pens, quill stub, and A1 college pens. I will have to read up on this, but I'm thinking there might be, like I just said, a, a few of each. So I was drawn into that. I do like that it's unique, that it's vintage, and that it's something I might be able to share. This here feels like a type of cardboard. Um, it reminds me of a straw, like a, a heavy duty straw. So I should probably read up on that. Um, it was unique enough that I, I did go ahead and 
fall for that, I guess you could say. But anyway, it was funny because you talk to people. I was just visiting a friend in Michigan, and the woman whom I talked to today has family that's up in a town right near where my friend lives. So we had that little bit of common ground. So I wasn't going to buy anything. Ha ha, right? I walk in the door, and then they have the vendor there, Dram Ghouls, and right away I was drawn to the Bennu, Bennu pens, and they had Opus pen. Let me see if I can open the box. So I saw this, I asked the guy to tell me a little bit about it, and he did. And so my husband, who's always very generous with me, bought this beautiful orange pen. It reminds me of the color of like a tangerine sort of like a murky orange very pleasant color I like the big pens I got the broad nib in it Opus 88 broad nib I really like the shape of this I like the flat ends on each side now some people make mention of the um, clips I don't use a clip other than to slide it into my um, pen case that my good friend Kim made for me. It does seem like a decent clip. It's got some play to it. And this is a eye drop filler, he was telling me. So when you want it, it's an eye dropper. Gosh, here we go. Eye dropper filled, so it does come with the eye dropper or you could do a syringe. And so when you open this up, it allows the ink to flow. And then when you don't want it to flow, you need, it kind of has a little squeak to it. You have to um, shut it and it will keep the ink from leaking. And he gave the example, if you're flying, and you're taking your pen with you, the pressure change won't cause it to leak. I do like the chunky size. I think this will be super fun. So I I will hopefully do a little bit more on the pen and the paper once I have this inked up and think about how I'm gonna use this. <laughs> I may just switch out some pens and we'll, we'll or not pens, notebooks and have fun rotating. That is all for now. I hope that you enjoyed this little um, summary of the St. Louis Pen Show.